I'm very happy to be here. And just let's continue the conversation. Earlier, we had the opportunity to hear about the importance in AI in agriculture. And that makes sense because today, we are not making AI because it's fun. We are making AI because we need to solve problems in the society and in the environment. If we think of that, let's start with this example. We have an AI system that is focusing on targeting diseases and detecting pests in crops. After Christina's presentation, now we know that the system is not as simple as possible because it needs to recognize insects, it needs to recognize plants, it needs to recognize a lot of elements. If we, if we all try to make that kind of system, I think everyone familiar is going to agree with this, in which we have a training data set in which we are going to make our model. We have, in this example, very silly and simple example, it's still relevant, four stages. You are detecting is healthy stage of early stage of a disease, middle stage of a disease of the end of this stage. That seems very, very simple. Now, let's think about the real world scenario. When you are applying that system to reality, you will find that it's not only the detection of the disease, because you will find examples as this. There is a frog in the first picture. There is a frog in the second picture, and there is a frog in the third picture. However, those frogs are different somehow between them. Still, your model will produce an outcome. Your model will say maybe it's healthy in certain percentage or could be a disease. You agree that this is wrong, the output will be wrong. And we know that that happens in neural networks because of the way that they work. They tend to be overconfident to this kind of examples. We call those unseen data. Why? Because the frogs were not in the training data sample. At this moment, if I think with the statistical thinking, we'll say, well, maybe that is easy to detect. The truth is, that this is very complex, and we have a paradox there. When you are creating a model, normally you want to know everything about your model, and that comes from the data. And if we think about the data in the y-axis and the understanding of that data in the x-axis, then you start finding these four categories. By the way, those are risk-related. It's a very happy path to be in the pinkish sector in which you know what will impact your model. But please be humble and recognize that you will not know everything in your model and it's correct to ask what I don't know. Because in the end of the day, what you don't know is going to be the reflection of your system that you are creating. We have different impacts, right? If I know very little of my data, I don't know even if it's relevant or not. And it's a very gray area. If I keep learning about my data, of course that will trigger how strong is my model. At this moment, you should recognize that there is a fundamental problem. You, as a researcher, or as developer or as salesperson in the ecosystem for AI, you cannot know everything. There's a tool that will help you to identify this when you are creating that model. And that is called out of the distribution. Out of the distribution detection has two forms. The first one is when you have a new data sample that represents a new class something unseen in your data will trigger a new classification problem and then you will detect something new is happening in your system. The second one is that when you identify the same class, however, the behavior is totally different. If we think about what is the benefit of using this kind of technology or jargon, you will enhance 
your model will be more reliable and it's going to be something that you were looking for when you are trying to position your AI system. Let me put something on context. As principle, this is not as easy as it sounds. I have been with the uh, statistics uh, people and we're trying to go to try to make this problem down, to bring it to the ground. And we have realized that training data is not easy, available for real world problems. We don't have enough data, and even if we have the colleagues from Google and Meta providing all that data, always you will have exceptions in real world scenarios, and you need to be aware of that. When we think about deep learning, normally we say, oh, it's image classification, object recognition, but also please have in mind that there are not only that kind of data. We have also voice, tabular data, of course the images, but the, the, the point is that it's not only one type of application that we can apply for targeting this problem. What is the relevance of this in real world? We need to think that our models will support decision making and decision making is relevant for solving problems. Let's, let's think about this. Normally when you are positioning your system, you say, my system has the accuracy of 90 something percent, right? And we position, oh, this outperforms the other system by five or 10 percent or whatever percentage. You guys, you shouldn't accept that as a fact for selling or positioning your system. In the other hand, you should ask how your model handles unseen data. Because of course, if you're selling a system and you say that has high percentage of accuracy, to be honest, it's quite uh, expected, right? You will not be selling a system that is not performing well. So what is the first message? The empirical error is no longer enough for taking a system as a valid system. Other thing that is, all these samples will occur. Whatever happens in your world, because you don't have all the data of the universe. Please, if you accept that, then you will say that all deep neural networks will face that problem at some point. The question is not if I'm going to have an invalid result. The question is that you will have that result and how are you handling that? And finally, the real world, that is the truth, we cannot generate even all the scenarios that we believe that will affect the data. Remember the first example when we had the frogs? It was quite trivial, but in your field, I don't know what are your field, you know that there is something that you should recognize as unseen. If at this moment you agree with me that the auto distribution is a problem that we need to address, then I provide to you some approaches. Today we are not going to go to technical formulas and equations. However, for me it's enough to tell you that there are different ways to tackle this problem. The first one, as you have in that uh, picture, is the post hoc detection. That means, in practice, that your model will resolve the misclassification issue after the error is detected. We have confidence enhancement, and you can see from the names that are very obvious what they do. Outlier exposure, they try to identify and to target the outlier of your data set. All the data generation focuses on generating all the data samples that you pretend that you will know that will affect your model. There are density-based methods, large-scale OOD, also Bayesian-based methods, because remember, the statistics are play an important role here, but we recognize that statistics applications are not enough for solving this problem. We have also graded methods and distance-based methods. There are some of the state-of-the-art applications that we have, and that is very common to find in the research and in the attempts for implementing this in real world. However, at this point you will say, Emmanuel, please tell me, if this is something that we all know that deep neural networks produce overconfident predictions, what 
why are you bringing that to the picture today? Because even this is well known, as I said at the beginning, no one put first that when they are trying to position the AI system. Remember that people say, my system is accurate like 95%. For me, that doesn't mean anything because I was expecting high accuracy for your system. Please tell me how your system is handling unseen data. This was well documented by Hendrix in 2017. That was the paramount in which every researcher recognizes the need for solving this problem. The approach was very simple because they were trying to see how confident were your model, and based on that, for a low confidence, then they trigger something called auto distribution detection alert. However, those who know well deep neural networks will trigger one message. The problem is, when you have a new data into your neural network, you will get an overconfident prediction, not the opposite. So a new unseen data will give you the worst error, basically. You will say, oh, I'm super confident that this is a, a healthy crop, and in, in fact was a frog, and not the picture of a crop. After that, the guys from now Meta, they create Odin, and a lot of people start trying to make simple approaches to explore how the deep neural networks are working. Then, in 2019, there was something called Mahalanobis distance, a very simple approach, but still very powerful, in which we were able to go deeper into the architecture of the neural network and then identify what is the benefit of applying this tech into a um, normal architecture that normally we implement. Two years ago, the research community said, this is not good enough, we need to improve how we handle unseen data, and then we start um, observing energy, energy approaches, which are based, like they said, the how much they consume into the model, and then you start finding a lot of acronyms, Athon, MOS, MOOS, VM, BOS, and you name it. Basically, what they're trying to do is to, instead of giving you the wrong class, telling you, I don't know. That is going to be something embarrassing maybe, but it's better to say, I don't know, rather than say, I know that this is something that is totally wrong. Let me put some examples. Everyone is in this, uh, familiar with this hype. We are going to have autonomous cars, right? Autonomous cars, as you know, they work with object detection technology. And you say, if I'm creating an autonomous car, I will have traffic signals, pedestrians, cars, buildings, and you name all kind of signals into your data set. But the problem is that we have seen houses, tractors, and helicopters in the motorway. How that was possible? I don't know, but it has been documented that that happens in real world. And again, that triggers the need of having this kind of tech because your model will say something is going wrong there, I don't know what is happening, and then do something to prevent a catastrophe that already has happened. Let's talk about health. I'm trying to now to give you, because I don't know your background, but if you are in health, if you are in autonomous cars, if you are a salesperson, if you are a researcher, I hope I will bring you something to your table, and then maybe we can engage a conversation afterwards. If you are in health, very old traditional machine learning systems were focused on X ray detection in images. And we know all that already. But that is, was just the starting point. Now we want to detect diseases, we want to go further, and we want to detect new diseases even. How we are going to do this? First, we, with the certainty that you are not producing a false result, or you are saying that you are confident or producing overconfidence into your output. If you are for the surveillance scope, for example, now you know that, oh, we can detect everything for the CCTV cameras. However, think in the future. In the future, we are going to do real-time detection, maybe. Maybe that's happening now. But in the, in the maybe a couple of years, we are going to have data from many sources. 
if you have data for many sources, you cannot guarantee that the distribution of your data is as you are expecting. So your model needs to be prepared to handle that. We have, of course, AI not only in health, not only in the autonomous car industry, but also we have in the supply chain. We are now trying to make offers on, 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 on real time. We're trying to predict the demand, and you name it. You think now what I'm trying to say is AI is an everyday, not just for fun, but an everyday activity that we're trying to improve the society and to be nice with the planet, to be sustainable. As, as, as I said earlier, I was taking your example in agriculture. We know that it's very relevant. We cannot afford to make misclassifications or produce false results. For that reason, I again took the, the, the example for, from Christine. And now we know in some expectation that this is not only relevant because it's trendy, but also we provide the, the better quality of health for people. And we have 15 billion expected to be invested in this field just with the umbrella of AI and deep learning. What are the opportunities then if we think about all the detection for your models that you are building? First, we need to target, to aim, to, to do open world object detection in which it doesn't matter where the data come from, your model should be able to detect that you don't know that that data is something and you will not produce a result that is overconfident. There is a problem now that we have. We cannot uh, do out of the main generalization. We cannot generalize. If you have a model for, for crops, it's, it's a shame, but cannot speak with the one from health and so on. And now we are making a small words, one for AI applied to health, AI applied to, and the end, the different industries, but how they are able to communicate between them is still an opportunity to explore. As I said earlier, going beyond images and take, taking into account all the data types is still a big opportunity. Many researchers already are trying to do that, but if you see the state of the art, there is no conclusive proposal. We still don't have realistic uh, data samples, data sets. We heard earlier and earlier, COCOM uh, data set, uh, the one that I present earlier for the, for the plants, and, and so on. But there are not enough data samples that are publicly available, because maybe the big companies, they have something we heard earlier, that they have a lot of data. But you, who are creating the products, you don't have access to it. Well, no easy at just getting it. Again, we need to incorporate auto distribution detection methods into your systems because I really would like to hear the answer how your system handles unseen data rather than what is the accuracy of your model. Beyond this talk, I was thinking we are here not just to exchange business cards. We are here to improve the state of the art, to progress the AI industry. We are not consumers only for the libraries that other companies are creating. Do you agree with that? We all have a role to play. We all can escalate and shape the next generation of the AI. There is something very important that I think you need to remember. We are in early stages of AI. I know that we are in different era. We are in a different generation. But let's be 100% honest. The models are still very unreliable. What is relevant is unreliability because at the moment, people cannot trust AI models, right? If you aim for a trustable AI, you need to go through the pain of making your models more reliable. I'm not talking only explainability. I'm not talking about data labeling and so on. I'm trying to make the, the concept of a whole effort for making this a reality. So what is the role that you have? 
Well, not only big companies can produce quality research and then make the trends. If you have a strategic partner, the, the advice is please go knock on the door. And just an example here, this company that I work for, they were looking into the planning, how we can start incorporating these capabilities into the AI development. We got Ben Gurion University in Israel in which we believe we can enhance these capabilities. That is just an example and what's in the media. But you also can find the partners, big, small, medium, that doesn't matter. What matters is that we all should make the effort for making this as the next generation of AI systems. I hope by now you agree with me in some points of my talk. Some of them were controversial maybe, some of them you don't agree, but in the end of the day, please recognize that accuracy of your system is not enough for position on for today's problems. Thank you very much for listening and a big thank you to the organizers as well for, for making this happen. Thank you very much. <laughs>